sarcophagus, the shelled object, it has completed its function. It has completed, yeah. But you see, initially, this very structure, this very facility, it was not sealed, yeah. It was not reliable enough because these very structures in 1986, they were just placed, they were just positioned as, as it is shown in this very model. Yeah. Uh, they didn't have any interconnection. Welding was not possible. They were uh, placed one by one close and closer to their place of the explosion. Initially, it was not sealed, and within, let us say, 18 post-accident years, there was a risk of local collapse. So the task of the stabilization project was to minimize this very risk, the risk of local. Uh, the shelter was uh, uh, stabilized and reinforced. Some of the structures were repaired. I have shown you these very pictures which illustrate the roof repair. Yeah. All in all, uh, these very works were completed within five years, 2004-2008. Yeah. Five years. A large-scale project and extremely important yeah, extremely important because these very works, they have ensured us time, first of all, and stability for the nearest 15 years, at least 15 years, right? A very short period of time. The works were completed in 2008. Yeah. In 2008, we practically we don't have time. But within uh, this very short period of time, yeah, we have to uh, complete a new project, the project on the new safe confinement design, construction and commissioning. Yeah. That is the primary task for uh, today. A very important project, not only for the Chernobyl site, not only for Ukraine, yeah, but for the whole world community. Because first of all, this very facility and new structure, new safe confinement, arch-shaped structure, first of all, it has to ensure the safety environment. You see, the lifetime of this very facility, it has come to an end. It came to an end three years ago. It was constructed only for 30 years, which passed three years ago. That's why so urgently we need a new protection. So the new safe confinement, first of all, it has to ensure a protection against the still existing risks. It should ensure their safety environment and infrastructure for the following works. Commissioning of the new safe confinement yeah, we have already completed the first step, let us say, of its commissioning. Uh, in summer this year, the so-called trial operation was completed, successfully completed. And it has demonstrated um, the so-called operational readiness of this very facility. Yeah. Now we have a guarantee period. Yeah which will last 12 months all in all, yeah, started uh, from uh, summer. Yeah. So we have a guarantee period within which uh, all the weak points, the drawbacks should be eliminated. Yeah. So when it is finally commissioned, yeah, we will start the works inside. Commissioning of the new safe confinement, it won't be the final step, won't be. It will be a beginning of the works inside. And the first step which will be undertaken inside, yeah, it will be deconstruction of their existing shelter. Yeah. The first stage, which is called early deconstruction. Yeah, we're talking about the structures which were placed after the explosion, the sarcophagus structures, yeah, they should be dismantled, yeah, deconstructed, yeah, and processed, and placed for long-term storage inside. 
and these very works they should be completed up till 2023 because the stabilization project has ensured us time up till 2023 otherwise these very structures should be additionally stabilized the second stage it will be processing of these very destroyed systems and equipment just imagine these are radioactive wastes just imagine 600,000 cubic meters of radioactive wastes, 43,000 cubic meters high active wastes. They should be processed. Yeah. The deconstruction of the reactor department then. And the basic goal of this very strategy, that is the strategy for shelter transformation into environmental safe site. And the basic goal of this very strategy is these very tons and tons, 1300 tons of fuel containing materials, long lived, high active, yeah, containing <coughs> nuclear fuel. Yeah. Uh, Nowadays, uh, there is no final decision. Yeah. Either they will be left inside and the safety environment uh, will be ensured for their long-term storage or they will be removed yeah, and placed into a special storage facility yeah, uh, in accordance with uh, legislation, uh, Ukrainian legislation, uh, it should have a very high level of protection constructed in deep geological formations. Yeah. Ukraine does not have such, it should be constructed. Well, a lot of work has been done already within these very years which have passed, a lot of work, but a larger amount is ahead. Yeah. And of course, um, it's not possible for Ukraine yeah, to complete such a, a large amount of works yeah, without international uh, support, without international assistance. And uh, we greatly appreciate the efforts of these very countries, the flags of which you can see here. These are donor countries. We greatly appreciate the efforts uh, for, for completion. Yeah of these very works here in Chernobyl. Of one of the most uh, large-scale and complicated measures which were, compl uh, which were completed within the stabilization project. Because the Western area was the most risky one from the point of view of instability. Yeah. I have already mentioned that the load-carrying beams when the sarcophagus was constructed, I'm sorry, the load-carrying beams, yeah, these very beams, uh, in 1986 within the construction of the sarcophagus, they were placed in the west, they were placed here, to this very wall, yeah, western wall at axis number 50. Yeah. Uh, so they were placed here. And this very wall, even it is shown at the model that it was not stable, yeah? There was a risk of its moving to the west, yeah? In such a case, there was a risk of the shelter roof collapse, yeah? So that's why special, special, they were shown at this very picture, special steel support structures, tower type, yeah? Steel support structures were placed here, yeah? And these very beams, they were jacked, jacked by jacking a load from this very wall, which was not stable, it was transferred, yeah, it was taken off and transferred to these newly installed structures. Nowadays, even if it collapses, these very beams, the shelter roof, they will be supported by these newly installed structures. A huge steel structure, yeah. Nowadays, it weighs almost 37,000 tons. Yeah. I have already mentioned that the, the, the new structure, first of all, it's a protection against the still existing risks. Yeah. When it was placed into its design position, that is over 
the shelter, immediately we began to measure the levels of uh, gamma radiation here at the site, yeah, and at, at various distances, at various heights. So, um, at the average, the levels of gamma radiation uh, have become 10 times less. Yeah, just in this verification, have a look at this very readings of a detector. Yeah, uh, it's uh, the left one. Yeah, 1.19 microsievert per hour. That is the level of gamma radiation, not inside but outside. Yeah, uh, the detector is at the roof of our building. So. Uh, when the arch was at the construction site, 300 meters far from, it was specially done by the bar, yeah? Uh, so the arch was constructed not just over the shelter, because the levels of radiation are higher, yeah? It was specially done to minimize the personnel exposure, yeah? It was constructed at this very specially arranged platform, yeah? Uh, when the arch was at the construction site, the level of gamma just in this very location was five, seven times higher. It means that the arch, it works already. Yeah. A huge steel structure, it uh, consists first of all of steel elements. It has a completely bolted interconnection bolted, yeah, especially high strength bolts, 500,000 in number, they were used to interconnect, yeah, all their arch structures. So the frame, steel frame, the arch has a uh, cladding, multi-layer and multifunctional structure, internal and external cladding, which uh, consists of various uh, materials such as uh, uh, carbon steel, hydro isolation materials, heat keeping materials, various kinds of membrane. The basic element is stainless steel. So internal and external cladding, the distance between them is 12 meters. 12 meters, right? It's um, it's uh, uh, a notch, it's in 12 meters, yeah, between cladding here. Uh, so, uh, a, a, a space, this very space, arch annular space, is 1.5 million cubic meters, yeah. Uh, this very space will be uh, filled with warm air. You know, an arch is a, a steel structure. An arch is a steel structure, yeah? And corrosion will be one of the most serious problems, yeah? We're going to operate it within a heart, not we, but the next generations, yeah? So it will be operated for a very long time, yeah? So to minimize, yeah, to lower a percent of corrosion, yeah, uh, uh, to, let us say, to slow the process of corrosion, it will be necessary to lower a percent of humidity inside. That's why uh, especially climatic conditions should be not only ensured but kept within a very long period of time. Yeah. This very space, arch annular space, it will be additionally pressurized. Yeah. Uh, the pressure um, uh, will be higher in this area space, the pressure will be higher than the, in the arch basic space and the atmosphere pressure. It is done to minimize uh, gas aerosol emissions outside and getting of moisture inside. Yeah. You know, the arch was constructed at a special site, 300 meters far from. Right. By the way, here, have a look at these very pictures. That was the beginning. The beginning of works here at the site. Yeah. And we started them with site cleaning. You know, after the uh, accident, various materials, uh, well, uh, um, crash stones, uh, soil, concrete was placed to the site as shielding. 
and within this uh, cleaning activity, yeah, cleaning works, we have to remove this very material. We have to clean the site uh, practically uh, up till pre-accident levels. That's why um, uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, cubic meters of, uh, uh, in fact, radioactive wastes, yeah, technological materials, they were removed. In two years, the site looked like this. The task of these preparatory works was to ensure the infrastructure. But we began them with the site cleaning, right? So in two years, the uh, site looked like this. That is the site where the arch structure was uh, assembled. You know, the arch was assembled on the ground, yeah? Step by step, yeah, on the ground. But then it was lifted using special equipment, the system of jacks. Yeah, it was lifted. All in all, there were six lifting operations, three operations per each half of the arch structure, western and eastern half. Yeah. Well, uh, nowadays the arch uh, is lifted at a design height that is 109 meters. By the way, the arch nowadays is the largest movable structure in the world which is uh, 109 meters high. The span from the north to the south is uh, 257 meters. Yeah, the length is 150 meters. The largest movable structure in the world. It's not just a steel frame. No, no, it's not just a steel frame. It's a great technological complex now, which is equipped with a system of main cranes, first of all. Yeah. This very equipment yeah, should support the further works I have mentioned, the works uh, on deconstruction of their existing shelter. 